Hey guys, welcome back to Keys of the Cosmos. I want to do a little bit of a different video today. Instead of my usual astrophotography target tips where I talk about one target, everything you need to know about it, I want to do more of a comparison video. So this is a target uh, that we're talking about today in this video is Thor's helmet. And I've actually done an astrophotography target um, video on it. But that was quite a while ago. I was using totally different equipment. But it made me think, why not do a, sort of a comparison video of what we'll call beginner setup, okay, Star Trek or all that, we'll talk about that, versus my current one, which we'll call an advanced. Definitely not going to call it expert. I am no expert at all in astrophotography. And there's much more expensive and better equipment that you could be using that maybe someone would consider expert. But it's definitely advanced and um, advanced in the, the equipment itself, the cost of it, you know, all of that. So it just happens that the, this latest time shooting um, Thor's helmet, I got almost the same amount of exposure time. Wasn't uh, planned. I wanted to get way more on this latest attempt, but you know, this usual story. Um, it's terrible skies, terrible weather, small window to shoot it. Uh, Thor's home is in the southern sky, which is terrible for me. And it's been a you know terrible winter for weather. So I was only able to get about the same amount of time. So I thought, well, if that's the case, why not make a video sort of contrasting the two? Now, obviously, there are other variables involved. There's a lot involved. I mean, one of them is processing. But uh, my skills have obviously improved over the year or so that it's been since I took the two images. So we got to factor all that in. But let's just talk about the equipment and the difference that the equipment itself makes in trying to capture your best image possible. So just a quick overview. I'm not gonna talk about all you know the detail where to find it. I did that in my original video. You can watch that if you're wondering how to find Thor's helmet you know, manually. But Thor's helmet is a beautiful emission nebula. There's sort of a white hot central star that's creating this beautiful structure as it interacts with the gas around it, ionized gas. Uh, what I like about Thor's helmet too is that it's sort of in the greenish blue spectrum, not you know HA red like all, most of the other ones. So, and and just it's really you know cool looking as per as per its name. Thor's helmet kind of resembles Thor's helmet with the two points, um, distinct points on it, and it's really beautiful. I, as I mean, I wanted to sink a ton of time into it this time around, but it just didn't work out unfortunately. So I was stuck with a limited amount of integration time. So. Um, really quickly, it's in the southern sky. The easiest way to describe where Thor's helmet is, if you think of Orion, okay, everyone knows Orion. Um, down and to the left is Sirius. It's the brightest star in our winter sky. You should be able to notice Sirius even in the worst sky conditions possible. It's bright and you can't miss it. And so if you think of Sirius and you just sort of go to the left and slightly up, that's where Thor's helmet is. So if you picture Sirius and this is about where Thor's helmet is, and what it does as it goes over in the night is it starts to go up and over. So now you're talking Thor's helmet is up and to the left. And as they both set, you know, it kind of goes this way. So it never really gets very high. Thor's helmet, it gets to about 35 degrees, which is, you know, not terrible. But I usually start shooting most targets at 35 degrees just because of my light pollution. So that makes it a challenge. It's also very small and it's also quite dim. It's a magnitude 11 and a half. So that's definitely on the more dim side. And, um, you know, it's, it can present a challenge, especially when you're talking about light polluted skies. So it's a challenging target as I talked about in my first video. And, you know, it's one that you're going to want to take a little bit of time with. And you, we're going to talk about in this video why having the, in this particular case, having the best equipment possible will give you quite an advantage. So we're going to talk about four key things in the astrophotography setup, a typical astrophotography setup four things and the difference between my initial setup and my latest one. So I think I've shown this picture before. This was actually the night I was shooting Thor's helmet. This was the, this was the night, of, one of the two nights I was shooting it. You can see my setup there. This is what I use pretty much give or take the first year of astrophotography. So we have my carbon fiber tripod, very nice quality one. I have my star adventurer, star tracker made by Skywatcher. I, uh, if you're, Keen either, you know that I noticed that I upgraded the base to it with a William Optics base that gave it more stability. I've talked about that before. You'll notice my Sharp Star 76 millimeter telescope I love, still use. And attached to that is my, or was my, I don't have, longer have my Canon uh, 800D, I think, modified, astro modified DSLR. Inside that camera, which you can't see, is the Optolong L Extreme. 
So there's a brief overview of my setup. You can see it's crazy light polluted. When the southern skies, I have to shoot at the front of the house. So I have to deal with street lights. Just terribleness all around. You know, terrible skies, terrible street lights. As almost as extreme, other than shooting maybe right downtown Toronto in the in between the buildings as you get. So uh, we'll talk about how some of my latest equipment helps me to combat that light pollution. But there is my setup. And we know... We've talked about it in many videos. My latest setup, what am I using? I'm using my uh, Ioptron CEM40 EC mount, and that has a much higher weight capacity. So on top of that, I have in this picture here, I have my uh, Explore Scientific ED127, and attached to that is my ZWO533 MC Pro. And inside is the um, Radian Triad Ultra Filter. I've talked about that filter. Uh, before it's fairly new I'm gonna be making a video on it but anyway uh, amazing filter so we'll talk all about it so let's kind of go through those four four key components of the rig and talk about what are the differences so let's start with the mount now obviously in my first one I talked about it's not really a mount per se it's a tripod with a star tracker but we'll call it a mount we've talked about the difference many times a star tracker is still very good it still tracks the night sky accurately it's just you don't have go-to functions and it's very limited in weight. Weight is the biggest thing. Why is that a big deal? Well, because weight means uh, affects the telescope you can put on and what we're going to talk about this first point, exposure length. With a bigger mount, you're able to do longer exposures um, and it tracks more accurately, ideally. So you still get fairly round stars and you're able to do that with a heavier a telescope now in this case we talked about Thor's helmet right it's very small it's very faint so you want to use as much a big a scope as possible to get in zoomed in as much as possible and in this case with my star tracker my sharps are 76 millimeter is the biggest telescope I can use and I will say I've said it before it's too big for the star tracker it weighs something like seven pounds but when you add in the reducer and then the camera I mean you're you're at the max weight of what they recommend for that star tracker so what does that mean shorter exposures one minute exposure is the longest and even then they're not the great you know the roundest of stars by any means so what is shorter exposures as opposed to longer exposures where with my ioptron even with that big telescope i'm able to do three minute exposures so what's the difference well longer exposure means the camera is staying open longer shutter it's allowing more light you're getting more signal you're able to get more details um now there are some arguments yes you can shoot short exposures and more integration time and it's total integration time that's more important. People can battle back and forth on that. And that is definitely debatable. But in my experience, longer exposures, particularly on a faint target, are an advantage. Now, you don't need to be able to do 10 minute exposures. There are some targets out there that, that would definitely benefit from that. But your average target out there, even if you can do three minute exposures, like I am, I did in my latest uh, image of the Thor's helmet, it's a big advantage. I, at least that's what I've found. So again, you can debate back and forth on that. But what I will say is just because you can only do one exposure, does that mean don't bother? No. Spend more time overall if you can. If you do have the weather, spend more integration time. Get as much integration time as possible and that will battle, you know, only being able to do one minute exposure. So yes, in my opinion, it's an, it's an advantage to do longer exposures, but it's not a, a blank statement, you know. More integration time definitely will help. And the longer you can spend on it, the more details you'll be able to pull out of it. And the more you'll be able to crop in to get those details. So mount definitely helps. The go-to function is amazing. I mean, all that set aside for talking strictly picture quality, the longer exposures definitely do help. Let's talk about the telescope. So sharp star 76 millimeter with the reducer, focal length 339 millimeters. In my newest uh, rig, I have my Explore Scientific ED127 with the folk reducer as well, 666 millimeters. So almost double. Why does that help? Well, in this case in particular, we're talking, I mentioned focal length, but really the way you want to focus in on is aperture. Aperture is simply, here's my red cat. Aperture is this measurement here. So how wide is the, the, the front end of the glass that's going to be taking in that light? More aperture equals more light coming in, light gathering capacity. And Simply put, this might be debatable to a lot of people, but more aperture equals more resolution, 
Okay, focal length doesn't necessarily mean that. I'm not going to get into details. I'm not qualified to, to explain that to you. And there's people that are much better qualified and much more, more knowledgeable. But generally speaking, okay, we're keeping this as simple as possible. More aperture equals more resolution. With more aperture, you're more cropped in. You get better details. There's no way around that. I don't think anyone can argue that. Now, when you start getting to more, the you know, fine points of astrophotography, there is definitely a debate there. But if we're talking about just a simple setup versus a, a quality, ap higher aperture telescope, you're going to get better resolution. You're going to get better details. And here's just to sort of prove that point to you. Here's, I don't have a single exposure, okay, like an actual exposure from the first time I shot it. We know the deal with astrophotography. As you start to do it, you run out of space on your computers. And some of these older pictures that I know I won't be adding to, I have the final picture saved, but I deleted all the files. It's just, I can't keep it all. So what I do have here is a picture of the back of my LCD screen from my camera. So picture, you know, whatever a screen this size, that's Thor's helmet there. Okay, it was a tiny smudge. In fact, it wasn't even distinguishable, a distinguishable shape. So that just goes to show you how small it is with the sharp star and the uh, sensor there in my in my DSLR. Now here's a single exposure from my latest one with the you know three minutes on my uh, Explorer Scientific ED127. Look at the difference. It's upside down by the way here, but already just in a three minute exposure you can see details. You can see strands of gas. You can see the two points clearly. Obviously, this is going to be easier to process. This is going to be easier to pull out details. You can't argue that, you know. So aperture makes a difference. When you start getting into really finite things, that's where you can get into more of a debate. But when you're going after something small and faint, you want as much aperture as possible. And a bigger telescope definitely helps. So hopefully that guy gives you guys an idea of what it, why I'm saying what I'm saying. Again, integration time will really help with a smaller telescope because you'll be able to crop in more and still get details. But ultimately, this is going to get you more details. Let's talk about the camera. So my first setup, I talked about my Astro Modified DSLR. Astro Modification, I'm a big fan of it. If that's what you're going to be using for some time, I say you do it. In this case, I don't know if it helps so much because that's better for HA. It has to do with the uh, red eye blocking when you remove that filter um, that blocks red eye. So you're talking about specifically HA, red gas, right? Like in these targets. In, as we talked about in Thor's helmet, it's more O3, S2, I think the wavelengths of light green, uh, green and blue. I don't know if an Astro Modified camera really makes that big a difference. But even besides that, I've talked about in my, my another video where, uh, in this video where I talked about the DSLR versus Astro Dedicated Camera. What's the difference? What should you know? And that's a great video for those who are looking to look, who are um, trying to get into that and who are thinking about making the switch, it should give you a lot of information that I learned along the way. But there's no getting around it. One is made for all sorts of things and is better suited to uh, a lot of light and, you know, taking landscape, family portrait, all that. And one is only made for astrophotography. It specializes in a, uh, a very sensitive sensor made to be shot in very low light situations. So what do you think is going to be better? Obviously. Um, doesn't mean that DSLRs can't be used. There's amazing pictures. This was taken with DSLR, both of these. Um, but there is a difference for sure, the camera. One is meant for specifically for one thing, and obviously it's going to do a better job. So I do recommend if you can eventually switch to an Astro dedicated camera, but it comes with a whole bunch of things. I talk about it in that video that I mentioned. I won't get into it now. So it, it is something you need to plan for and think about, but eventually I do recommend it. And it did make a difference in this particular image. Let's talk about the last one, the filter. This is probably the least of the four. In fact, it's definitely the least of the four because in both instances, I was using a very quality filter. In the first time I used my Optolong L Extreme. Um, great filter, does a great job blocking out all that light pollution. I showed you that picture where I was shooting from. It blocked out all those street lights and just sort of allowed in mostly the, the wavelengths of light that I wanted. However, in my latest one, I use my Triad uh, Ultra. So Triad Ultra Quad Band uh, filter. What's the difference? It's just more harsh, another wavelength. So it's four wavelengths of light instead of just three. Makes processing a little bit easier and just even more strict pass of what light allows in. So it's only allowing what I want, not what I don't. Um, 
I do find, just quickly, I will say, it did give me some, I'm gonna do a, a video on this. I, I need to test it more. It did give me some weirdly shaped stars, so you can look for that in my final image, my latest one. Um, and I've noticed it before as well when I did the Crab Nebula. So I'm starting to wonder, is it this with the 533 or is this with the Explore Scientific telescope? Because I know when I use my L-Pro with that telescope, they were great, round, clear, no problem. So something to I'll think about and, and definitely include in a later video. But what this does highlight is a good light pollution filter. So important. I've talked about it so many times. So don't worry. So don't go run out and spend the money on this if you you know if it's a stretch down the road or maybe never. The Optal and Extreme is definitely good enough. It's a great filter, and there wasn't that big a difference I don't think between the two images. But it does highlight good filter is so important makes such a difference, particularly if you're shooting in light polluted skies like I am. Uh, integration time, I don't think is going to make, make up for a really good filter, in my opinion. A good filter allows you to shoot less time and still get great details and pulling in that light that you want. So those are the four key things, the mount, the telescope, the camera, and the filter. The biggest of those, I would say, is definitely in a target like Thor's helmet would be go, come down to the mount and the telescope. Because the mount allows you to shoot longer exposures, the telescope has that aperture for such a small target to still be able to get a ton of detail uh, without spending a ton of time. So I spent on the original image about four and a half hours, on the newest one, five-ish. So, you know, again, a little bit less on the original one, but still very close. And it's not going to be that significant, half hour, 40 minutes. Um, but... The, as I want to bring out, you know, the more time you can spend, even with a simple setup, it's going to give you a big advantage. And not only that, also, I've talked about this all many times, but and earlier in the video, but going to darker skies. Those are things that ultimately you should be able to control. And when you put yourself in the best situation, even with simple equipment, you will get better results as opposed to shooting, you know, only in Bortle 9 and, and just with one minute exposure. It's, it's going to be more of a challenge. There's just no way around it. If you can get to darker skies, you don't need as much integration time. It's going to make your processing easier and you're going to get better results. So what's the point of this video? Does it mean you need to spend a ton of money to get good results? No, not at all. Uh, I'm still happy with a lot of the pictures I took with my simple, simple setup, beginner setup. Um, but it just showing you with certain targets, you do get an advantage with the better setup and you know, you, the, the ceiling is higher. Let's just put it that way. It ultimately it still comes down to your processing skills. So continue to work on that. And as I mentioned, if you can improve your environment, that will also help. So don't feel bad if you're, if you're, you know, going to be using you know, the beginner, more simple setup for some, you know, whatever, another few years, just keep working on your skills. Keep, you know, get everything as the best you can and keep working on those processing skills and you can still get some amazing pictures. But I thought it'd be interesting to do a comparison. I had sim same target, same location, similar integration time. What's the difference? So let me show you that. I'm gonna show you that now. Here are the two pictures. But just wanna say thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate your support. Appreciate you uh, subscribing and watching my videos. I got a lot to come, including some gear reviews coming up shortly. Thanks, guys. See you on the next one.